1964 Impala SS Part 12. Install the upper trunk deck and start the left hand quarter panel installation. Now this is the easiest way I found to transfer brackets. Cut out a larger section of the old piece with the bracket. Overlay it for location. Drill a couple of pilot holes. Then overlay it onto the new piece. And now you have the exact location. And we can weld through those holes. Okay, with that attached, now let's then get this upper deck installed. Now I've already prepped and primed the mating surfaces here. And now I'm punching some holes that I can plug weld through. And I'm using these welder, I call them welder's jacks. They're used for mobile welding a lot. Very, very handy. They'll extend or telescope up to about four feet. Then you can, uh, then you can screw them up from there. And here we go with the actual upper deck installation, setting it into place. And yeah, it'll hang on everything that it can. And that's what the jacks are for because we can raise and lower each side of that. Front, back, side to side. Super handy. And here's a shot of that. So I'm just turning that turnbuckle there. And what we want to do is we want to go ahead and uh, do a measurement. Just to make sure everything's square, level. If one side was down further than the other, well, we take a look at why. So, these are Clecos. Now, the leading edge of that upper trunk deck that connects to the rear seat pan. We're going to hold that in place with these Clecos. And then get some screws in there. For more secure fitment but we're going to go ahead first and hit it with this little mini blaster now this is just sand in there i think you can pick these up probably at harbor freight and i this is one of the ways i really like to do it also there's several methods to uh do or achieve this now what i'm doing here well, that's already finished out. I've already plug welded. That makes a really nice, clean contact surface without having to grind the backside. Leaving the most amount of EDP coat that we can leave or weld through primer from the backside. And here I've already prepped the upper deck mating surface to the inner wheelhouse and that's going to really aid as soon as I strike that arc it's going to allow for a better chance at a really nice plug weld and one of the benefits of that is well you don't have to come back and grind anything if you can do a one and done Hey man, that's uh, that's ideal. And what we're trying to do with the plug welds anyway is we're trying to mimic the factory resistance weld. And here's a shot after I have dressed down the welds. Everything is really nice, flush. Hit that with a flap wheel. And we will spray a little bit of epoxy paint primer over that. Just enough to hold the bare steel to keep it from rusting. And there it is. And any imperfections will come back with seam sealer. Any uh, 
any little divots there will make it really nice okay let's get this remnant of the lower trunk pan out of the way and what I'm doing here is I'm trying to save that little 90 degree bracket that connects the trunk gutter together and just trying to take my time be careful not damage that part now a new one did come with the lower trunk but if I can reuse a factory piece that's always preferable and there goes the last little piece of the uh, original trunk now this is just a little filler piece it kind of sandwiches in several places it actually the filler net goes through this piece through or in between I should say the upper trunk deck lower trunk and the inner and outer wheelhouse and getting that all nice and prepped and we're using all of these clamps because we want a really nice tight fitment we don't want any large gaps or anything crazy like that and it's like I mentioned, even though we're going to come back with seam sealer, we still want a really nice job. And there it is all dressed down. We'll shoot a little bit of uh, primer over that, epoxy primer. Now we're going to get these deck lid hinges installed. And if you'll remember, we had to straighten that trunk gutter right above that. Because of the accident, it had overextended the original deck lid hinges and actually bent them up pretty good. That's in a previous video. So we're installing some uh, replacements. Looks like we're good to go. Now I had left the left hand trunk gutter attached but I'm going to remove that and here is the new replacement quarter panel and we're going to get that thing prepped get it ready to install going to go ahead and uh, do my plug weld holes And now I've already cleaned all this surface up. This is the front mating surface on the front leading edge of the quarter panel lip. And those white marks there, those are alignment marks for my screw holes or the screws that I use to align this panel. Because, yeah, usually I'll have more than one and I just makes it easier and I'm gonna go ahead and uh, measure that out now this is the lower part of the front quarter I don't want to put a hole <laughs> in direct alignment with that factory cutout yeah how many times have I done that so I'll just measure it out and uh, I won't put a hole where there's nothing, no backing. And just prepping the uh, wheel well lip on the new quarter panel. And we'll do a trial fit. Now I know I don't show it in the video, but yeah, this quarter panel will be on and off. 
probably four or five times. Let's get it held into place. I don't see what we have. And the reason it's going to be on and off four or five times is, well, nothing, it's not just a one-shot type deal. You have to trim a little here, trim a little there, remove it, make make all of the uh, lines fit. Well, now you can see that here, I haven't welded yet, but I've got a really nice gap, really parallel gap. The body lines look really nice we don't want to just put it up there and start welding we want to make sure the fitment is everything got a really nice uh, gap there really flush lines and you can see our uh, back is fitting really nicely Looks like we're uh, good to go. A little trim right there, and we should be gold. Okay, we're going to start at the leading edge of the quarter panel because we do not want that gap to uh, to distort or do anything crazy. We wouldn't want to start at the middle or the back and work forward. Work forward to the back. And I'm using that same little uh, mini blaster there. And then that way none of the mating surfaces are ground and there's bare steel. That's what I was trying to say earlier. That just uh, cleans that little area where there's going to be weld. And for 18 gauge steel, <laughs> yeah, that, we're going to run pretty hot, but I'm really trying to get a nice plug weld, really nice flat profile that I don't have to do a lot of work to. Especially in areas like this, I mean, you know, getting something in there to uh, grind that down, yeah, that can be, well, you can end up uh, scarring the surrounding metals or uh, damaging the surrounding metals yeah we just want to avoid that whole uh, whole movie and we're just going through getting our plug wells now this is the inside where the deck filler and the quarter panel meet now, I've seen a lot of guys just skip this part or maybe put some screws in there or something. But, uh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, you have the ability to weld that in there. It's not that big of a deal. Just a little bit extra effort. And here's that little section. We'll take care of that. And like I mentioned, it's all in the fitment. And then we will come back and dress down this joint here. And uh, it'll look really, really nice. Now I've shown this before in other videos. The this piece here was trimmed off. It actually slides up underneath of the roof skin. But there are several pieces that are resistance welded and sandwiched in that area. And to try to put it underneath, yeah, that would be that'd be like jumping off a cliff. 
yeah we're not going to do that we're just going to lap it over no issues with that as long as everything is nice and flush and this piece is under a trim piece so yeah no worries we're not going to do anything stupid here and cause ourselves a lot of problems we're just taking our time trying to get a really nice plug weld we don't have to go crazy with the welding and we're just going to knock the tops off of those welds you can see I'm not removing a lot of material we don't want to over grind it just enough to make it look all uniform and there's going to be seam sealer in this joint anyway so yeah, just enough to uh, make it all look uniform And if you really work on your fitment, everything goes so much nicer. Then you then you don't have to overweld. Then you don't have to do a bunch of extra grinding. Uh, fitment is everything. Take the extra time. And we'll just run a wire wheel in there and get it prepped. Now this is a little mini DA. And since we're going to be shooting a little bit of epoxy primer on there, we want to make sure the surrounding areas are all prepped. You know, if you just follow the steps every time, there's always a predictable outcome. Now a little bit of Scotch-Brite, just for redundancy. And there's the joint. And now this is after the welding is complete. Everything looks really good. Really happy with it. And like I mentioned, we're just going to shoot just a little bit on there to hold it. I have no idea why the uh, video is upside down. But <laughs> there it is. Okay. The last thing we're going to do on this video is get the fuel opening tightened up welded and we'll finish out this quarter panel on part two or part 13 yeah just a real quick shot we've got a perfect welding area Because if there's paint or anything like that, it can, uh, yeah, it can really uh, make you not have a good weld. And I'll show you the, or why I'm doing this in the next segment here.
All right. You can see how nice of a weld. that makes and just keeping everything nice and cinched together we were on an edge there didn't want to blow through And we're almost there. And like I mentioned, we're going to get a stopping place here. And I will pick this up, show you the rest of the quarter panel installation. And part 13. And there it is, finished out. Hey, as always, thanks for watching.